for the following are true about the motion of the cart in the graph below. This is the graph of velocity versus time. Uh, there are two cards, cut one and cut two. The cut one represented by the black line here. Uh, so the velocity decreases from uh, 10 huh, to zero in the uh, positive direction. And then at five seconds, the velocity becomes zero and then change the direction and becomes negative, okay? Meaning moving in the opposite direction to the initial positive direction. Uh, statement A, at seven seconds, the clock reading uh, the cut one was moving with the same speed as the cut two. At seven seconds here, the speed is minus four, the cut two, the speed is four. But the term is the speed, not the velocity, okay? Velocity can be negative, but the speed is simply the magnitude, how fast an object move. So the speed is simply a positive number, and therefore this statement is correct, okay? Yes. Speed is only uh, is always greater than zero, so the speed is the same minus four and four. But we can consider both like four. Uh, the statement B: Cut one moved at a constant speed. Uh, that is definitely wrong because it's decelerate, huh? It's slow down until zero here, and then change the direction. Meaning it has direction, not constant speed. B is wrong. Okay, C. Yes. Cut one move in the negative direction over the entire eight second trip, it is wrong because it's not uh, the whole time, eight second, but only the last three seconds. Okay, so this is wrong. At the eight second clock reading, uh, at the time eight second here, the cut one was moving faster. The speed is six meter per second. The cut two is four. So yes, it was faster moving faster than the cut two. Hmm, so B is correct, huh? Cut one will move faster than the cut two. Moving with the same speed uh, at seven seconds, four and four, the same, yes. Six and four, six is greater than four. Hmm, B is also correct. Uh, let me check the mark, see the answer later. Consider E. At the five second clock reading, the cut one velocity is zero, huh? Uh, at the origin of the coordinate system, it is wrong. It simply means velocity is zero, not necessarily it returned to the origin. Huh? So uh, we wonder between A and D. The answer, 38. Hmm, I cannot search for number 38 in here. It's like picture, not a PDF file. Mm -hmm. 38, the answer is A and D. So there are two correct answer, huh? Yes. <laughs> the same thing with my uh, uh, arguments. But uh, let me check if it is possible to choose two answers in the real test, huh? Yes. AP physics ones, two correct answer. What percent can I have? Uh, can I have two correct answer for AP Physics one? Hmm. Okay. This is a question from many years ago, two thousand and seventeen. Two correct answer in AP Physics one. choice and what? <laughs> Help me, please. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you get five choices and two of them are correct. No half credit. Both must be bubble in correctly. So uh, you only get the entire mark, not half the mark, huh? uh, when you choose two correct answers. But yes. uh, is it still valid today, to, um, like 2023? Because this is the old time. Uh, students should not use a scatter shot along dry list. Can I be prepared for the physics two multiple choice? Okay. I will pass this question to like Facebook group huh, and, and get uh, an answer and send the answer to you later. If uh, like the recent AP test is still include uh, many 
correct answer at the same time, huh? It's Normally good. we have only one correct answer. Okay. So for oh, D okay. here, uh, the, the value of the speed is six meters per second, which is faster than cut B, yes. the cut two, or which is four meters per second. Two. Oh, can both. you explain Sorry. B or B? Uh, what? E? B, B, B. B. Move constant speed in negative direction. The speed decreases to zero at five seconds and increase again in the opposite direction. The speed for the cut one is not constant. You see, it changes all the time. Not a constant, not a horizontal line like the cut two like this, okay? Uh. Yeah, the speed here decreases from 10 in the positive direction, such as moving to the north, decreases the speed to zero at five seconds, okay? And then yes. turn backward and move toward the south, south oops uh, and increase the speed again to toward the south okay uh. so uh, the speed is not constant and therefore the statement b is wrong yes okay what's the next question oh 46 46 uh, and you can check the answer when answering the question huh, at the end of this book Yes. 46. Determine how much time it takes for the arrow to reach the ground. Okay, free response. An archer stands on the castle wall that is 45 meters high. He shoots an arrow with velocity 10 meters per second and an angle 45 degrees relative to the horizontal. This is projectile motion. Okay, a, an arrow is shot at an angle 45 degrees like this. This is initial velocity. The angle 45, projectile motion. Um, determine how much time it takes for the arrow to reach the ground. If you remember the equation that I told you last time, uh, look back at the note that I sent to you on the Kakao talk. Huh? I will yes. later, later send you a link to a online drive that I saved all the notes during our learning um, sessions and also yes. the videos. The video. I recorded the video you see here, and uh, yeah, you can watch the video uh, later back if you need to, or simply just text me the question. Huh? Um, okay. okay, the equation to determine the time is two time of the initial velocity multiplied with a sine of the angle 45 degrees and cosine of that angle, and then divided by g. Now, you can take 10 or 9.8. The initial velocity is 45, and I will replace the value of V0 here to be 45 meter per second, okay? Oh, sorry, yes. sorry. 45 here is the height, it's not the speed. Looking for the speed, okay, the speed here. The speed is 10 meter per second, 10 here. So using the calculator, um, calculate this equation, the time. Uh, 20, huh? Two times of 10 is 20, and multiply with sine of 45, I need to change uh, this is the measurement of the angle in gradient. You know that gradient. Or well, let me change it normally to the um, degree. Degree first. This is the setting. Uh, I change the angle to degree instead of gradient. Okay. Yes. And then I return to the calculation. Twenty multiply with sine of forty-five degree and cosine. Oh, here, here on the sine already. So. Need to replace this thing, 45 degree and times cosine of 45 degree. And the answer is syntax error. There are like two arrow. I need to uh, remove one arrow, a one, one bracket sign. Okay, the answer is 10. That makes sense because uh, sine of 45 degree is the same as Cosine 45, you can check that with the calculator, and the value is square root 2 over 2. And therefore, when you multiply them, psi times cosine, you get uh, square root 2 over 2 squared, which is 1 half, okay? And 1 half, you multiply with 2, that is 1. So the final answer, the time is 10 seconds, okay? Yes. The time is 10 seconds. Well, we don't divide 9.8. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I forgot to divide that. <laughs> so 10 divided 10 is approximately one second. Huh? If you take uh, 9.8, 10 divided 9.8, it is a little bit greater than one. 
uh, 1.02. You can take one, okay? Yes. Uh, yeah, one second equal about one second. Uh, two significant figures. We check the answer. 46. Oh, the time is much, much longer. Something wrong with my calculation. Oh, 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 sorry. I know, I know why I was wrong. This equation is only applicable, only valid for, let me move it to the book. Um, valid for calculating the time for the arrow to read its initial height, but in it, the arrow was shot from a certain height compared to the ground. Uh, let me open the board and write on it. Where is it? AP. No, okay, here. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is the uh, note from last time. Already uh, export the PDF file and send you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 46. 46 here. Erase this thing also. Maximum range also, huh? Okay. Uh, on the castle wall, that is 45 meter high. This is the castle wall. Okay, a castle wall like this, defending. If you watch like a um, movie like The Lord of the Ring or something, uh, recently, like Game of Thrones, <laughs> there are eight acres huh, standing on a, a castle wall, shooting arrow, and the height of the wall is 45 meter, extremely tall. Huh? Normally, it's like 10 or 20 meter, but it's really very your stronghold, a great castle. Huh? Shooting yes. arrow at an angle of 45 degree. Okay, compare the height. Let's try the board again. Forty-five degrees, and at the the height of forty-five meter above the ground. Okay, the arrow is shot at this angle, forty-five degrees. This is initial velocity, which is ten meter per second. The yes. angle here is forty-five degrees. The equation that I told you last time, um, t equal two times of v zero times sine theta and cosine theta over g is only applicable to calculate the time to fly to the top and then return to the same height, the initial height here. Okay, uh -huh. but the question is the time so that the arrow will continue flying uh, until reaching the ground below. Yes. The ground below here, 45 meter. So we cannot use this equation but you another method, another equation, huh? Which is the second equation in the formula booklet. Uh, here. The equation here. But replacing the notation x to be y, the vertical position, okay? Yes. I will choose the horizontal exit like this. But we do need not. Uh, we do not care about horizontal movement direction, huh? We only care about the vertical movement in this direction. So the initial position y zero is zero. We will use the equation um, y equal y zero plus u uh, initial in the vertical direction multiplied with time and add it with one half of the free force direction and the square of time. The second equation in the booklet here, okay? But replacing yes. x to be y. This is the initial vertical velocity, which is the initial velocity V0 multiplied with sine of 45 degrees. Okay, remember trigonometry? Yes. This is the velocity initial. This is the horizontal component, VOX. And this is the vertical component, VOY. Sine of this angle, sine is the uh, opposite, which is VOY over hypotenuse, which is VO, okay, V0. So VOY vertical initial velocity is the initial velocity multiplied with sine theta. 
Okay, you need to practice a lot with this trigonometry because in this course, um, AP Physics one, we deal a lot with the sine and cosine, yes. and sometimes with tang, tang of uh, an angle. So this is initial velocity. Y initial is zero, and uh, G is also positive, not negative, because we chose intentionally chose the downward direction to be positive. Downward direction is positive. And the time is what we need to find here. The high, when it reaches the ground, is 45 meter compared to the origin O here. Okay, 45 meter. So basically, yes. oh, I, I miss a letter T here. There another time after the sign. Okay, so this yes. is a quadratic equation. We can rewrite that equation. Half of 9.8 is 4.9 T square. Uh, V0 is 10, side of uh, 25, 45 degrees is squared up 2 over 2, uh, then multiply with time, and uh, minus 45 equals 0. We need to solve this quadratic equation. Can you do that with your calculator? Yes. Okay, so please do that. You can use the calculator to find a solution of the quadratic equation or you discriminant, huh? Discriminant. Uh, so I don't know how to find in your calculator. Mm -hmm. uh, with the calculator, what kind of calculator? Calculator, calculator do you have? Uh, Casio or something or um, TI in Inspire? Oh, TI. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me change the share screen here. Yeah, can speak or share window into the screen. This is my TI, huh? Is that the same with yours? Or oh, oh, it's a little mm. bit different. Okay. But uh, there's like no way that I can change this thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, look for the function math and click on math, something yes. like that, and go to the bottom the bottom of uh, this um, function, solver, equation solver, okay? Yes. And then I type in the equation here, 4.9. Uh, I can use any letter, X or T. Huh? The letter T is somewhere. If this is V, this is E, uh, looking for letter T. K, L. P, uh, v, T here, okay, they're alpha, T, T squared, okay, T squared. And then uh, the second term is 10 square root 2 over 2, 10 uh, divided, instead of writing square root 2 over 2, okay, just, just write normally, times uh, square root where the square root, yeah, 
square root of 2 hmm, square root of 2 here yeah, over 2 and t alpha t the second term okay and finally minus 45 okay done uh typing the equation into it okay in your calculator yes. probably you have uh two boxes huh? two boxes tapping the two equation one equation is like this the other equation the second equation is simply zero okay yes and then enter and then you need to type in a value you guess to be the solution of this equation i can guess like the time is uh, three seconds or something just hit three in it and then uh, alpha click alpha and so there so the solution is 2.39 seconds, which is like 2.4 seconds, okay? The yes. time, the solution is 2.4 seconds. Let's check it with the mask in here. Oh, different. Something wrong again. <laughs> oh, I know the, the reason why uh, it was wrong. The initial velocity here must be negative, not positive, negative, because it goes up initially. Acceleration 9.8 is downward and therefore it is positive, but the initial velocity V0 is negative. Okay, so I need to change the sign there, the sign here to be negative. Okay, yes, and change back in the equation again, uh, change a little bit in the calculator, change the, um, the, the, the sign from positive to negative here. Yeah, change into the negative sign. And then so for the time, I, like, I can guess like three seconds, hit the three seconds in it, and then alpha and so. Okay, the time is now correct, 3.84 seconds. Wow. 3.84 seconds, okay? Yes. So uh, the important thing is the sign of the each quantity. Velocity is upward. So it's negative, and the acceleration g is downward, and therefore it's uh, positive. Okay. Yes. There's another way uh, manually that we can solve the equation using a thing called discriminant. You know that discriminant delta equal b square over uh, minus four times of ac. You know it. Yes. Okay. Uh, B is 10 square root 2 over 2 square minus 4 term of um, 9.4.9 and uh, minus 45. Do it manually and then uh, take the square root of delta and then uh, the term is the minus of B, which is 10 square root 2 over 2 minus or subtract. I assume that uh, this delta is like greater than this thing, so it depends on minus or subtract, depend on that discriminant, huh? Mm, but you should practice using the calculator because it's faster. Later, you can uh, look back uh, the video, huh? So that uh, you can use the calculator to solve the solution of the T, the time. Yes. Okay? Yes. Okay, what is the next question? Oh, 47. 47 also. The range. <clears throat> Determine the range of the arrow. Uh, we already have the term here. So the range is very simple. It's just the in horizontal velocity mult multiply with um, the term. V, O, X multiply with the term here, okay? The horizontal velocity is 10 initial velocity multi multiplied with cosine of 45 degrees, okay? And the time we calculated to be 3.84. You should take the more accurate value in the calculator, not round it, okay? Yes. Not round it, uh, 8.4. And the range will be 27.3 meter. 27.3 meter. Oh, but why the range is velocity, initial velocity times time? Uh, time cosine 45 here, this trigonometry. Yes. Uh, this horizontal velocity is constant. Horizontal 
velocity is constant because there is no horizontal force. We ignore the air resistance, okay? Is constant, no horizontal force and therefore no uh, horizontal acceleration because there is no horizontal force. Okay, so the motion in the horizontal direction is constant. Let me show you a photo projectile motion. Vision. <clears throat> like this? Yes. Mm. So you see the distance between two vertical dash line here, many vertical dash line here. The distances in the vertical direction between the two successive position, this point and this point, is the same as the distance from the middle point, this point and this point, and so on. The, dis the horizontal distances between these points is the same. It means the horizontal velocity is constant, okay? Yes. But the vertical position, you see here, uh, the um, vertical displacement for the first time interval here is shorter than the next time interval and shorter compared to the next one and so on, meaning the object accelerates downward because of the gravity, the acceleration in the vertical downward direction is 9.8, okay? Yes. So the point is that horizontal motion is constant. Horizontal uh, position or distance is calculated by horizontal constant uh, speed multiplied with the time. Okay, the next one here, 48. No. <laughs> okay, what's the question? Oh, uh, well, I don't understand why the formula is like that. <clears throat> Range formula. Mm -hmm. Now, please excuse me for one, uh, like one minute. I need to do something in the center text. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, you asked for what equation? Yes, 47. 47, determine the maximum range of the arrow. Hmm. 7.1. 7.1 is the horizontal velocity, you know, uh, calculated by multiplying 10 here with the cosine of 45 degrees. 10, it will initial velocity okay multiply with cosine of 45 degree yeah 4.07 they round it to 7.1 okay 7.1 and multiply sure. with the time that it flies from the castle wall to the ground to the enemy in the ground on the ground <laughs> okay 3.84 oh i don't understand why the range is or uh, velocity Multiply time. Okay, here. The horizontal motion is constant, the velocity is constant because the initial velocity is this black arrow, okay, making an angle 45 degree. We can yes. consider this velocity as the two components, horizontal component, the red arrow, and the vertical component, the green arrow. The vertical component will make the, the the arrow goes up and then falls down because of gravity. Yes. The horizontal component, the red arrow here, is constant, and therefore you see in this diagram the position of the arrow at different time interval is the same. You see the dif the distances between these points one, two, three, four, five, etc. is the same. Yes. Uh, you take this photo to the board. I mean, these distances, 
the same. For example, this is a uh, 0.2 second, this 0.2 second also. So these distances are the same. The horizontal motion is constant, okay? And therefore yes. the range, the range is the horizontal velocity multiplied with the time of the flight, okay? Uh. Yeah, keep practicing that. Do more question and you will at least know how to do it without not really understanding it. <laughs> uh. Oh, I have question in the 1994 FRQ. Uh, 19 what? 1994 FRQ. 1994, ah, okay. This one, no. Let me look for that file, where's that? I forgot uh, where that file was from, looking for it. AP. Uh, free response. <clears throat> mm. Did I ask this one? No. Let me check this guy. If I sent you that file last time, I would forget where it was. Okay, this one. Just download it and move it here okay no not this one not this one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay uh like Shooting a ball, huh? Yes. 0 0.5 kilograms. Initially at rest, kicked directly toward the fence uh, from a point of 32 meters away. As shown above, velocity ball at least the kicker's foot is 20 meters per second at the angle of 37 degrees of the horizontal. The top of the fence is 2.5 meter height, and the kicker's foot is in contact with the ball for. 0 0.05 second, the ball hits nothing while in flight, and the air resistance is negligible. Determine the magnitude of the average net force exerted on the ball during the kick. Okay, you haven't learned this. This is the next topic in the plan, uh, which is Newton's law. Open the plan. Okay. Um, so probably we'll leave that later, huh? After learning uh, this second topic, Newton's law. Yeah, yes. and, and momentum, momentum here. So we should learn uh, momentum right after the Newton's law, even after Newton's law, because they are very closely related to each other. Yeah, yeah. I'll leave that, do that later. Yes. Hmm, are the free response question? about Newton's law also and kino dynamics instead of kinematics. Looking for the kinematic workbook, kinematic multiple choice, kinematic free response. Is that, is it, okay. This is not a book uh, that you can download and visit the link. But we will use this book a lot at the same time with the 500 AP question here. Huh? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the free response questions part, page 21. Mm -hmm. Okay, 1993. <laughs> Long time ago. And you read it and try answering that yourself first for five minutes before I explain. 
Okay. And please download that file huh, to your computer. Of course, I will save this file uh, on my computer also. And, and, and write on it so that we have a, um, a, a um, what's it called? Kinetic video response. That's the number of the page here, 24. Mm -hmm. Can you send in Kakao to the file? Send what? The, this because file. I sent the link uh, under the, the Skype here already. Ah.
check if I have. So can you explain this one? Uh, this one, what, what exactly the question? Meaning A or B? Or okay. everything. Okay. Yes. Okay. Elevator, basically acceleration, positive acceleration, and then negative acceleration. 
determine the velocity of the left at the end of each five second interval. Okay. What is the initial uh, velocity? Oh, this one, this one. Elevator recall acceleration function time that it has shown the graph though, the time with displacement zero, velocity v zero. Okay. So the initial velocity is zero at the time t zero. Okay. The acceleration during the first five times, uh, five seconds is zero. A1 here is zero. And therefore the velocity does not change, remains zero. Okay. Yes. So during the first five seconds, the velocity remains zero, horizontal like this. Okay. Yes. Then uh, the acceleration increases like instantly to, this is four, huh? Four meter per second square. This new acceleration is four meter per second square. It means that the velocity increases by four meter per second each second. Uh, from five seconds to six seconds, this is the time. From uh, five seconds, the velocity is zero. To six seconds, the velocity increases by four meter per second, meaning the new velocity here is four meter per second. Okay, and then uh, seven, seven seconds, the new value is eight, and so on. Um, Twelve and nine, uh, that is sixteen, and finally at uh, ten seconds, which is here. Huh? At 10 seconds, the velocity is 20 meter per second. So the answer is 20. It increases linearly uh, from 0 to 20, a straight line. OK? Yes. Straight line connecting those points. Uh, or you can calculate the velocity with the first equation in the formula sheet here. Initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied with time. OK? The acceleration. Um, Acceleration is four meter per second square. Initial velocity is zero. Okay. Acceleration is four meter per second square. Multiply with the time five seconds. So the answer is twenty meter per second. That is for the second part. Okay. Yes. The third part acceleration is zero again. Uh, A three here is zero. So velocity remains the same during this uh, part also horizontal line. And finally, acceleration becomes negative four. It is negative below the horizontal line exit here, huh? horizontal exit. So this is negative four meter per second square. And similarly, during the last five seconds, the velocity will decrease from twenty. Uh, the final velocity, final velocity will be uh, initial velocity, which is twenty, huh? And you add it with the deceleration, which is minus four here, and the time five seconds. So the final velocity will be zero. And therefore, the last part of the graph is the straight line uh, to zero, huh? Yes. Straight line to zero. <laughs> Hard to draw straight line. Yeah. That's so. This is the solution the uh, graph of velocity. Okay. Yes. Question B, <clears throat> determine the displacement x of the elevator above the starting point at the end of each five second intervals. Indicate your result by completing the following table. Okay, uh, the first part, the velocity is zero during the first five seconds. Therefore, there is no movement, no motion, and the position remain the same zero. Okay, remains to be zero. Okay, in the next yes. five uh, seconds, the acceleration is four meter per second square. And to find the distance move during the second part here, you need to use the second equation. Yes, okay. Yes. Please do that yourself using this second equation. Initial position x0, e0. Initial velocity here is also zero. So only one half of a t square. Okay, yes. uh, so. Here, the x1 is one half of acceleration is four, and the time is five square. Let's see if I can write it smaller so that uh, it is enough space. x1 here is one half of acceleration is four, and the time is five square. 
So X1 is 25 uh, multiplied with 2, 50 meter. Okay, 50 meter. Okay, what about the third part? What is the distance that uh, this object move during the third part? Five seconds. Uh, <clears throat> 70 okay. meter. Simply multiply the speed, huh? the speed 20 with the time, the time uh, five seconds. Here, the speed here, 20, the value here, okay? Yes. 20. If this is a constant motion, velocity is the same 20 during the, this third part, and therefore it's 20 multiplied with the time five seconds is equal 100 meter. Mm. And lastly, the, the, the last part, you need to use the same equation, but replacing the acceleration to be, uh, okay, the last part, a little bit more complicated. Huh? Um, the x fourth is um, v initial, which is 20, multiply with the time five, and then add it with one half acceleration now, negative four, okay? And the time five seconds squared. This 20 is the initial velocity at the beginning of the fourth part, which is 20. In this equation, Vx0, it means the initial velocity at the start of that stage of motion, okay? Yes. 20. In the first part, the initial velocity here is zero, but for the fourth part, the fourth part here, the initial velocity here is 20. And the yes. uh, acceleration is negative four, and this can be called deceleration slowing down, the object is slowing down, okay? It's negative four, and therefore the, the last part is a little bit tricky. Uh, this is 100, and then uh, subtract 50, huh? another 50 meter. Yes. Okay? There's another way that you can do it a little bit faster. You see that the um, area here under this triangle is the distance that the object moves during the first part, okay? And it will yes. be exactly the same with the area here, this triangle, that the object moves in the fourth part. The area is the same, so 50 meter here and 50 meter here. Okay? Yes, yes. The area of the rectangle in the middle is the distance that it moves during the uh, middle part. Five second, 20 multiplied with five, 100, which is twice the area of each triangle, huh? Yes. The area of one triangle is half of the area of one rectangle. Okay, so we have just calculated the distance that the object move for, uh, during the four stages, four parts. Now, plot the displacement is a function of time of the graph. Um, during the last, the first five seconds, it does not move, so it is horizontal like this. And then it's moved 50 meter for the next five seconds, 50 here, huh? And this is a, a accelerated motion with a certain acceleration. Therefore, the graph for the next five seconds here is not a straight line, but a parabola, okay? Quadratic equation. The equation here, here, we use one half uh, at square, okay, to calculate the distance. That is a quadratic equation, and therefore this is a parabola. Okay? Yes. The next part, it continue moving uh, 100 meter, so the next definition is here, in a straight line, so that you need to draw carefully so that the straight line here is tangent to the end of this parabola. Tangent to the parabola here, huh? Okay, and lastly, it uh, decreased to zero at uh, here, another parabola and reaches zero. Okay, parabola downward. Okay.
But sure, but I don't understand why it's parabola. Because the equation for the motion with a constant acceleration, when acceleration is a constant, you have the equation, the second equation in the booklet, the formula sheet is the position equal initial position plus uh, initial velocity, Vox, uh, Vx0 time plus one half at squared. Here, the second equation in the formula sheet, okay? And this yeah. equation, the variable is the time, include the second power of time. So this is a quadratic equation, quadratic equation, okay? And therefore yes. the, uh, the equation of a quadratic function, the graph of quadratic function is a parabola. We can see that with the desk mode um, graphing calculator here. For example, the simplest quadratic equation is y equal x squared. We have a parabola like this, okay? If I add a constant a here, constant a, the constant a will change the slope of the parabola, okay? The greater the value of a, the parabola will be thinner, okay? Yes. The thinner the parabola. If a is uh, decreased until it's a is negative, a is negative, the parabola is now downward, okay? So consider A here is like the term, and I will add another uh, second, second term, X, with another value, a coefficient B, okay? The yes. coefficient B will uh, affect the position of the vertex. Yeah, the vertex of the parabola without changing the curvature, the steepness, uh, how big or thin the parabola is, okay? Yes. And finally, add it with a constant C. The constant C will uh, make the parabola move up or down. Okay, yes. so basically, the function to determine the distance that the object move with a constant acceleration is a quadratic equation, and therefore the graph is a parabola. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'd like you to do this following uh, simulation. Velocity uh, accelerations, GeoGebra. So that you understand a little bit more about the relationship between velocity and acceleration. Yeah. Here, please click on this link and change the x, uh, change the velocity by, let me see if I can like change the, the curvature velocity here. No, there's no way to change that. Ah, okay. So I can change the acceleration to see how it affects the velocity and the uh, position x, huh? Yes. Like zero acceleration here and then five meter per second or something, and then zero again. Uh, and negative acceleration here. Hmm. Okay, so spend like five minutes doing this simulation yourself to, to understand a little bit more about the relationship between acceleration and velocity and position.
Okay, let's move on, huh? Yes. This question again about um, force and momentum. We'll learn later. Okay, let's do this one, 2000. Try doing that yourself. Okay, every time for which the card is addressed on the page 26. A straight line like this and downward indicate a negative acceleration. Yes. Negative acceleration and uh, the slope, the gradient of this, the this graph velocity is the acceleration. Okay. Negative acceleration. You can calculate that slope. And this part is a positive acceleration. Yes. And this horizontal graph represents uh, zero acceleration. This question in 2000, yeah, not very difficult.
I finish. Mm -hmm. uh, let's check if it is. Uh, it has a um, answer at the end, huh? Can I like uh, see the two thousand B one? Okay, two thousand B one. The solution is here. You can send take a photo of your solution, huh, on your notebook and send me on the Kakata. Ah, okay. Cross to the X exit. Got it. Mm. Do it on uh, like with a mouse. <laughs> Deceleration for the first session minus zero point two. Okay, from. Uh, 0 0.8 to 0, the change is minus 0 0.8 during the time for second. That's 0 0.2, correct? And then become a positive again with like uh, the same gradient, huh? Uh, we can calculate that from minus 1 here to minus uh, 0 0.4. The change is 0 0.6 huh? during the time. This is 9 seconds, huh? 9 seconds. And to 12 seconds, that is three seconds. Yeah, so here, wait, your solution is like 0.1. The acceleration here is 0.1, huh? It's not correct. Uh -huh. The acceleration here, you calculate similarly. Uh, the later velocity here at 12 seconds is minus 0.4, okay? Minus 0.4 at 12 seconds. Subtract the initial velocity here, minus one, minus one, and the time. The time is 12 seconds minus 9 seconds. Okay, so the yes. um, uh, acceleration in this part, and you can see the light, they are symmetric, the same slope, but one is positive and the other is negative. Okay, so the acceleration for the second part here is actually 0.2, not 0, .0 of, not 0 0.1, huh? 0 0.2 yes. meter per second. 0.2 meter per second square. So you need to. Um, Draw it up here. Go to yes. Not this one. Acceleration zero during the third part. The third part up to um, seventeen seconds. Seventeen. Okay, correct. The next part to calculate the acceleration here. We can take like one second to simpl simplify the calculation huh, from here and. The second number 17 to the 18 second, huh? 18 second. Yes. Velocity changes by 0.5. So the 0.5 you see here, 
wait, wait, sorry, point four. Yeah, you're right, point four. Changes by point four. The final velocity is zero. The initial velocity is point four, and during the time one second, minus point four. So the acceleration there is point four meter per second square, uh, which is here correct, and finally zero. So the error is here. Okay. Yes. Please fix that and move on to the next one. Question B, indicate every time interval for which the speed of the car is increasing. So you need to answer uh, the time range, the uh, time interval huh? from uh, here, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, from 9 second to um, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Yes. From from nine second to twelve second, and another interval is from uh, seventeen second to uh, twenty. Okay, twenty second. There are two parts that the speed increases, increasing. Okay. Yes. Question C, determine the horizontal position X of the cart at nine second. Horizontal position at nine second if the cart is located at two meters at the time zero. Mm. At nine second, five second, nine second is here. At the end of the first part, nine second here huh? at the end. So, to find that position, um, initially at least at x equal two, you need to calculate the um, distance it moved during the first nine second. Okay. Yes. The question C. Uh, let me write it on the board here. Question C. The distance it moved in uh, five second. Sorry, nine second, the first nine second. First nine second is x1 equal x0. No, we do not need x0 because we're calculating the distance. Or instead of the distance, we can write the position. If we use the equation position instead of um, distance, position. When we use position, we will put the initial position x0 here at the time 0, okay? And add yes. it with the initial velocity, uh, multiply with the time, and add it with one half of the acceleration, multiply with the square of time. The x1 is equal to x0 is 2, according to the um, statement of the problem, uh, located at 2 at the time 0. Yes. Uh, two meter v zero initial speed is point eight. Okay, point eight here. Yes. Point eight. The time is nine second, and then one half the acceleration is negative point two. Negative. Okay. Point yes. Two. Multiply with the time nine seconds square, and uh, finally you have the position at nine second. Two multiply with thing. Calculator two plus um, point eight times nine, point eight times nine, and then plus one half of minus one half is point five. Multiply with minus uh, point two acceleration. Multiply with the square of nine. Okay, so the position is one point one. One point one meter. That is the answer. Okay. <coughs> okay. Yes. The answer here, 1.1. .1. At the end of the book, huh? not exactly the end, but you uh, just need to control F and find the uh, number of the question here. Yes. 1.1. What the question B is. It's different answer. 
it can every time interval already done uh, from nine second to 12 second and from 17 second to 20 second. The or two paths, the, the graph goes up. The answer is different. Uh huh. Uh, let's see it again. Four to nine and 18 to 20. Okay, so that is probably some wrong reading on the graph here. From four to nine. Ah, oh, uh, from four. Wait, from nine here. Increasing the speed. Okay, the question is the speed, the speed, not the velocity, huh? Sorry, sorry. It's not the upward. The upward in the negative sign means the decree of the speed, huh? From faster speed to lower speed. Sorry, this this is wrong. Uh the increase in the in the speed is in the um, negative direction like this, huh? Yeah. So that is from four second here to nine second. Four second to nine second. And the increase increase in the speed here. This is 18, huh? 18 to 20. Mm. Uh, this part is actually the, the decree of the speed from uh, 0.5 to zero, but in the negative direction, okay? Mm. Yeah, so sorry, that's my fault. Even when we, uh, when I am um, like, what's it, underestimate the question, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> underestimate the difficulty of the question. So that's the point of practice. Practice the law so that we will not make the mistake. Nice right, again. Okay. okay. Question D. On the exit below, second the acceleration visit time graph for the motion. Acceleration visit time graph. We already did that, huh? Okay. Yes. Okay. The next one here is rocket launch engine upward okay the beautiful of this beauty of this book is that they classify the question huh, by topic yes. yeah. Yeah, they already classify that chapter one two three etc and therefore it's easier for us to follow we think of this question huh? do it yourself using the first two the third um, three questions uh, equations here okay yes. similar to like different situation but uh, the principle the underlying equation that you use will be the first three equation here have you happy spy save on the computer yes yeah okay so read the question carefully decent
Uh, I don't know the B question B. Mm -hmm. What maximum high would the rocket reach with the engine in it at the time the rocket shall blow the upward acceleration 30 meters per second for two seconds? Upon reaching maximum height, the rocket deploys the parachute and then descends to loss of the ground. Okay, pretty difficult actually. Copy it onto the board. Okay, firstly, it was provided a acceleration of 30 meters per second, but only remain the acceleration only in two seconds. This is like a toy, an actual, not an actual rocket, okay? <laughs> you can actually rocket fly like uh, 30 minutes uh, and escape the Earth, but only two seconds. So the velocity of this uh, rocket after two seconds, the if velocity after two seconds, or at two seconds, okay? The velocity of the rocket at two seconds. This is called instantaneous velocity, okay? Instantaneous yes. velocity. At that specific time, two seconds is uh, 30 meter per second square multiplied with the time two seconds. It is 60 meter per second. Let's go, this is V2, indicating at two seconds, okay? Yes. Uh, and then it will decelerate itself because of the gravity before opening the parachutes. It, the parachute is open when it reaches the top, the maximum height, okay? We are fighting the maximum height. Uh, and then the engine is shut down, it shuts down. No more push, no more acceleration, but the dis decelerate. Uh, after the first two seconds, the first two seconds, wait, two seconds, the engine was shut down, huh? Yes. Shut down. And the uh, rocket, this is a new sentence, the rocket uh, keep going up because of its own inertia and initial velocity, okay? Keep uh, yes. going up keeps going up um, till the maximum height, maximum height due to its uh, initial velocity. Yes, initial. Later, if you learn the next topic, um, momentum, you can say due to its initial momentum, initial uh, velocity. Okay, and yes. you can also use the word inertia. We will discuss this term and momentum later next week. Initial velocity until the maximum height. And its acceleration is 9.8 meter per second downward. Its acceleration is minus 9.8 meter per second square downward. Um, when the air resistance is ne neglected, okay? B because they say nothing about the air resistance. We do not have any information about air resistance so that we cannot involve the air resistance in the calculation. And that's beyond the limit of the curriculum, okay? The air yes. resistance is negligible. Resistance is neglected, neglected. So that the acceleration is minus 9.8 meter per second square. And the maximum height is calculated by um, using the third equation here. The third yes. equation. The maximum height is this subtraction, x minus x0. x0 is uh, on the ground, is zero, okay? Yes. Is uh, x equal minus x0, x0 here is zero on the ground equal to um, v final square minus the initial square and divide two times of the acceleration. v final at the top is zero. Yes. v at the top is zero, okay? Yes. 
minus initial, which is 60 here, yeah, 60 meter per second square over two times of exertion minus 9.8. So you see that minus here divided by minus, it is a positive number now, the height. Yes. 60 over like two times, oh, you can take 10 here. So it is about um, 60 over, okay, they think 60 square, not 60. <laughs> okay, 60 square divide two terms of 9.8, 9.8. So the answer is 183.7, yes. 183.7 meter. Oh, we can round to 184 meter, huh? Let me check the answer, 2002. Uh, what's the number, 2002 B1. 2002 V1. Okay. High here, 240, uh, which is different. This is like they route it down, not up. Huh? Uh, my solution is 184. They did they route it down to 180, but the total height. So we need to consider, uh, I forgot one part, huh? that is consider the distance that it moved during the first two seconds. So this is. Yes. Uh, the maximum height, okay, the distance that it moved, um, let me change the solution. This hex is the distance that it moved uh, from the time the engine was shut down to the maximum height. So let me add another statement into that first. Huh? Yes. Uh, so this is not the maximum height. To calculate the maximum height, we need to calculate one more step, which is the height of the rocket. Uh, after the first two seconds. <clears throat> uh, okay. So during this time, uh, the, the distance it moves, distance it moves. We need to add a, another step before that before this, this step, which is the height of the rocket after the first two seconds, huh? Yes. Okay. Create this thing and add another step here above that. Uh, the height and also it is the, the same thing with the distance that the rocket goes up during the first two seconds. I write a lot of words uh, so that you can understand it better, but in the real test, you just need to write the equation. I will summary, uh, write only the main step without many words like this, okay? Yes. The rocket goes up uh, during the first two seconds. Two second. Uh, we calculate that, let's call hex one. It's equal to V zero T plus one half uh, AT square, okay? V zero is zero, one half acceleration is 30, not uh, not 9.8, okay? 30 here. Yes. The first two seconds, it was accelerated by the engine, um, okay? Um, burning the fuel and push there out. Yes. Uh, and multiply with the time two seconds square. So two square is four divided two is two, two multiplied with 30, that is 60 meter, okay? And then after that, two second, the engine was such down, shut down, and this is the distance it moved uh, from the height, 60 seconds, uh, 60 meter to the maximum high, huh? to the top, to the yes. top. Okay, this distance is hex two. Okay, this is calculated by the third equation in the formula sheet. And then so the total, the maximum height is the sum of hex one and hex two. Okay, maximum Please. height is hex max equal hex one plus hex two equals 60 plus 184, you can round down to 180, that's 244 meter, okay, is the answer. 
And it is a little bit different from the answer in the book because they round it down 180 80 instead of 84. Okay. Yes. What is the solution? To sum up, you only need to write uh, three steps like this. Summary. Firstly, um, the velocity at after two seconds, huh? After two seconds, 30 meter per second square multiplied by two, 60 meter per second. And then the second step, H1 equal V0 T plus one half AT square. Uh, equal zero plus one half of 30 multiplied with two square equal 60 meter. Huh? The third step H2 equal um, V0 square minus V0 square, with not with V0, but uh, the V2 here. Huh? V2 square divide two times of G which is zero square minus two times of 60, oh, sorry, 60 square, not two times, 60 square over two times of 9.8 equal 184 meter. Okay, and finally, hex max is hex one added with hex two, which is 60 add with 184 equal 244 meter, okay? So even you only write a uh, four step like this, you still get the all the mark. Yes. It is enough for them to understand your solution, huh? Here we go. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Have you done writing the solution? Yes. Okay. Question C, at what time after T0 will the maximum high be reached? Uh, we know after two seconds, so we need to calculate the time from 60 meter and it go to the top, huh? like how many seconds, three or four seconds. And to calculate that time, we simply use the first equation here because we know that the velocity at two seconds is 60 meter per second. So the deceleration is 9.8, uh, approximately 10, huh? Yes. So we can use this equation, the V at the top, which is zero, equal to the V at the time two second, added with GT. Here the T to go to the top from 60 meter, huh? we can call it T2. Uh, V2 here is 60 meter, G is minus 9.8, and the time T2 can be calculated. Uh, as 60 over 9.8. 60 divided 9.8, uh, 6.1 second. 6.1 second. So the total time, total time is the sum of uh, 6.1 here and the first two seconds, huh, which is 8.1 second. So mm. that. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, the answer here, eight seconds. Okay. Uh, this is a very old question, huh? So uh, probably we skip that <laughs> more yes. than 30 years ago. Oh. And it seemed to be pretty difficult. Mm, skip that. Do this one instead, 2005. Yes. Okay, do it yourself. We only have one uh, segment left where, where the plan. Yeah. One segment left for um, this topic, kinematic. Huh? So you need to practice yourself more with uh, the document here. The, the, this document, I've just sent a link to you. Yes. The thing we're doing right now. Many more questions below, uh, behind that, huh? You should do it. You need to practice. Yes.
I finished. Mm -hmm. Uh, please take a photo and send me uh, also. Yes. It gives me a minute, I need to go to the bathroom. Yes. Hmm. What about the calculation of other questions? Uh, nothing to calculate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question A on the grid graph the velocity elevator as a function of time. Acceleration during the first eight seconds, huh? Eight second, good. And the value of acceleration is 12 divided by eight, right? 12 here, yes. divide eight. So that is uh, three over, wait, 12 over eight to increase the thickness of the pen. Um, acceleration, the first part, eight second is 12 over eight. And simplify by uh, divide for three over two, one point five. Yeah, correct. Yes. Five. And the second part is the deceleration. This is the velocity, huh? Oh, position, position. Why? Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is velocity. Velocity, not um, not not speed, and therefore this is not deceleration. Yeah, deceleration because the parabola, the curve. Okay. Uh, and velocity. Velocity decreased linearly. Okay, good. Linearly. The next value is zero. Uh, yeah, position does not change. It means velocity becomes zero. Yeah. During the next two seconds, correct? And then from 10 to 18 seconds, uh, zero movement, zero velocity. Okay. And then um, position decreased going backward, huh? Velocity now become negative, yeah. To 20 second, 20 second, the new velocity, the distance move is two meter, huh? In in two yeah. seconds, so the velocity is one after two second. Wait. How do we calculate from velocity from this curve during the first two second, uh, the, the, the next two second from 18 to 20 here? You need to find the velocity at uh, the time 20, which is the slope of this line, huh? The slope? Yes. So that slope is um, 0 here, 12, 12, divide this time, which is 3 seconds, huh? From, from, wait, from here, that is 12, right? 12 decreases to 0, the distance, and the time is uh, 5 seconds, sorry, 5 seconds. So that is 12 over 5, huh? 12 over 5, yes. the, the speed cannot be yes. simplified. 12 over 5, uh, 2.4. Little bit second. 
Okay, so your answer here is 2.4. Okay, good job. Well done. Beautiful. Calculate the average acceleration for the time period from 8 second to 10 second, uh, 3 over 2. Wait. From 8 second to 10 second, average acceleration. Okay. How do we calculate that? Velocity change divided by time. Yeah. The velocity chain is from 12 to 0. Wait, wait, the slope from, from 1.5 to 0, huh? 1.5 to 0, divide the time to second, 0 uh, uh, 0.75, correct? Well done. Good, good. And the box below to represent the elevator, draw the vector to represent the direction of the average acceleration. Vector represent, you haven't learned that, but we can learn it right now. Uh, arrow direction of this every acceleration elevator okay good that is correct answer downward because we see deceleration negative okay yes you did it correctly good job okay i will text you the assessment to practice uh, until next um, friday okay until Friday, yes, and we practice one more session uh, on Friday about this topic, kinematics. I'll talk to you later about the um, homework. Okay. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.